Hi to everybody. Today we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic that is cell. So which is the fundamental or basic unit of life, right? So actually the bodies of all living organisms are made up of microscopic unit, right? So what you mean by microscopic unit? So which we cannot see this in our naked eye, right? So the bodies of all living organisms are made up of a microscopic unit called cell. We can see the cell only with the help of the microscope, right? So the cell is the, so this is the definition of the cell, is the basic structural and functional unit of living organisms. What is meant by structural and functional unit? So, the structural unit in a sense, the cell form the structure of the organism, which means the body, the outer structure, right? So, the functional unit in a sense, they are going to carry out all life processes. What do you mean by life processes? Process such, uh, such like uh, nutrition, excretion, respiration, all those stuff are functionals, right? So these are the functions going to happen inside the organisms or with the humans, right? So this is very important. The cell is the basic structural and functional unit of living organisms or life. Then the next thing, so the study of cells. So that the study of cells in all aspects like structure and function, you know? So all these stuffs are called as cell biology. So the study of cell is called as the cell biology, fine. So the first point about the cell is it is the uh, fundamental unit of life. So it is a, first of all, it is a fundamental unit. So all the bodies of living organism is made up of a cell, which is microscopic unit. We cannot see this in our naked eye. And then the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of living organisms which means it forms the structure of the organism and also it is going to perform all the functions like excretion respiration is going to performed by the cell okay so this type of cell is called as a cell biology so the next thing so based on the number of cells you know so based on the number of cells so one organism may consist of one cell but some other organisms may consist of a uh, numerous number of cells, which consist of many cells, right? So based on the number of cells, this cell is divided into two types. So the first thing is unicellular and multicellular. So now we are going to see what is the difference between this unicellular and multicellular so that it will be very uh, easy for us to understand it. So the first point for the unicellular organisms uh, from the name itself, we can see uni in the sense single, multi in the sense it's many. Okay, so the first point about unicellular organism is that an unicellular organism has a single cell, but this multicellular organisms will consist of large number of cells, large number of cells. So the second point is about all the activities of the organisms are performed by a single cell, you know. So as this unicellular organism uh, will be having a single cell, all the activities, you know, the respiration, excretion, everything is going to be performed by a single cell only, okay. All activities of the organism are performed by a single cell. But in case of multicellular organism, a single cell performs one or few activities only. Okay, for example, if we take a skin cell, it is used only for the protection, right? For example, if we take a WBC, it is used for exchange of gases and also nutrients, right? So, here in multicellular organism, a single cell will perform one or few activities. The so, so, as this unicellular organism have a single cell, there won't be any division of labor. What do you mean by division of labor? Separation of the task, right? For example, humans have lungs, right? So, the function of the lungs is to respirate, right? So, what is the function of the heart? It is used for the pump. It is used to pump, right? So, but here, 
so in the human body all the separate uh, cells like organs will be performing a separate separate functions but in the unicellular organisms there is no division of labor no division of labor in the sense there is no separation of the task okay that is no division of labor as the single cell perform all life activities so coming to the multicellular organisms it's quite opposite to the unicellular cells are specialized to perform different functions so as i've already told you so the lung cells will be for performing the respiration process okay so like perform different functions of the body so that there is a division of labor within the cells so there will be the division of labor within cells so the next thing so we are going to speak about the reproduction so obviously in the unicellular organisms also reproduction is going to take place so reproduction consumes only a single cell so reproduction consumes a single cell okay so but here coming to the multicellular organisms so only some cells of the body okay will be undergoing reproduction so for example if we take a germ cells so which is also called as the reproductive cells will undergo reproduction so there are some other cells will also be there like somatic cells will be intact it does not going to perform any reproductive function so the next thing we are going to speak about the life span okay so here the unicellular life span is very short coming to the multicellular organisms here the life span of this multicellular organisms will be very long can you tell me the example for this unicellular and also multicellular organisms yes so example for this unicellular organ organisms are like bacteria amoeba and also some other organisms are also there like yeast okay so coming to the multicellular organisms the best example for the multicellular organism are human okay human beings so the best example for the multicellular organisms yes so these are the difference between unicellular and also multicellular organisms which we can understand very clearly about each and every organisms like unicellular and also multicellular so basically this unicellular organisms will have single cell so as it is having a single cell it is going to perform all the functions okay so and there is no division of labor and also it will undergo reproduction and its life span is very small it will be very short so coming to the multicellular organisms so these this organisms will consist of many cells okay so as it is having many cells it is going to perform all the functions with the separation of the cells and also there will be the division of labor and the reproduction will be carried out by the germ cells and its life span is about very long so coming to the discovery of cells so actually now uh, we know that uh, what is cell right so for example this is the cell okay so this is the uh, plasma membrane and uh, that will be the nucleus and inside here this is the cytoplasm so now we know this already right so we are going to see how they discovered the cell so here there was a scientist name robert hooke okay in the year 1665 okay so what he did you know uh, he was studying a, a thin slice of cork okay what do you mean by cork so if you take a beaker if you take a beaker you know so the cork is used for closing this beaker so it will be like brown in color yes so this is the cork which is used to close you know this is the cork okay so this cork is a substance obtained from the bark of a tree so you know what do you mean by bark so bark is the outer layer outermost layer of the uh, tree you know like so there is a very big tree the outermost layer you no know, which will be very dry right like this so this is the bark so from this bark they made this cork okay so robert hooke was studying so with the help, with the help of a thin slice of cork so this cork resembled a structure of honeycomb 
So the structure of the honeycomb will be like this. Okay, so they named this as a little compartment. Later, they named it as a cells. Robert Hooke uh, discovered this through his self-designed microscope. So he was the one who discovered a microscope also. Okay, he de he designed the microscope actually. With the help of this microscope, he viewed this cork and found this honeycomb structure and then later he named it. So, the cell is a Latin word called cellula. So, cellula means it is a little room. So, it looks like a room, right? It is a little room. So, in the year 1665, Robert who published his work, you know, so he published his work in the book called Micrographia, same in the year 1665, so which is very, very important. So, he was the one who discovered the cells. So, then in the year 1674, the scientist's name called Anton von Leeuwenhoek. So, he improved the microscope. Then, he discovered free living cells in pond water for the first time. So, in the year 1674, he discovered free living cells in pond water. So not only this, in the year 1678, the same scientist discovered sperm cells. So like sperm cells of humans, dog, rabbit, frog, fish and also insect. So he discovered this. Actually this hook only seen the thickened wall of the cells. Let me show this. So, he told us only about the walls, right? So, the walls are here, right? Not the substance obtained within the cells. So, we don't know what is present inside this little, little rooms. So, here comes the next scientist called 1831, Robert Brown. So, he discovered and named the nucleus. So, we know the nucleus. So, this is the cell, the nucleus will be present inside the cell. So, he discovered and named nucleus. So, nucleus of uh, plant cells. Okay. So, then in the year 1839, the next scientist called J. E. Perkinji. So, what he did, you know. So, he discovered a term called protoplasm. Right. So, protoplasm for the living fluid substance present inside the cell. So, Perkinji is a scientist who discovered protoplasm. So, protoplasm is the living fluid substance present inside the cell. Okay, that is protoplasm. So, which consists of cytoplasm, nucleus and also other organs. So, which is present inside the cytoplasm. Okay, protoplasm consists of nucleus, cytoplasm and also organelles. And then in the year 1866, so the scientist named Haeckel, he discovered that nucleus was responsible for transmitting hereditary character. Okay, so that is very very important. So nucleus is responsible for transmitting hereditary character. So what is my hereditary character? So, which is going to pass naturally from the parent to the offspring, right? So, the nucleus is the thing which is going to pass from our parent to us. So, offspring in the sense, the baby, okay? So, hereditary in the sense, passing the natural things like nucleus from parent to offspring. Clear? Yes. So, then in the year 1838, the scientist named Schleden, Schleden, okay? So, he discovered all plants consist of cells. And then here is the next scientist, the year 1939, Shivan. So, he discovered all plants and also animals are made up of cells. So, these two scientists in the year 1838 and also 39 is very important. Schleden and Shivan, they proposed the cell theory. So, these are the basis of cell theory.
So Shidan and Shivan proposed the cell theory. So finally, the cell theory was refined by a another scientist called uh, Virchow in eighteen fifty five. So he is the last scientist. So what he discovered, you know, all cells arise from pre existing cells. So the cell which is already present. Okay, so from the old cell only, new cell is formed. So for example, this is the pre existing cell. From this cell. New cells or form. He proposed this. So the cell theory refined by this virtue, and they finally postulated the cell theory. So we'll see what is cell theory. So what are the points or there in the cell theory? So the first point is about all organisms are composed of cells and cell products. All organisms are composed of cells and cell products. So, what do you mean by products? You know, so actually the cell consists of all the organelles like mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, everything, right, lysosomes. So, for example, if we take a mitochondria, we can get energy from that, right? So, the manufactured by cell organelles or the cell products, right? And also, everything we are getting from the cell are called as a cell products okay so that is the first point. all organisms are composed of only with cells and its products and then the second thing is about all metabolic reactions takes place in cells so metabolic reactions so what do you mean by metabolic reactions which are nothing but are chemical reactions Right, so there are chemical reactions going to take place inside the cell. For example, whatever we are eating, you know, we are eating food, right? Those food is converted into energy, which is the chemical reaction. So all metabolic reactions takes place in cells. Then the third thing, all cells arise from pre-existing only. So the no cell can originate spontaneously you know it cannot come as such so it have to come only with the help of the pre-existing cells then the fourth you know every organism starts its life as a single cell even the humans starts their life from the single cell you know so there will be the sperm and also egg when it fused together it forms a single cell called zygote right so zygote is a single cell so after the replication process the zygote will be converted into embryo which consists of 8 to 16 cells right so after that after the long replication finally fetus will be formed so this is very important which is the cell theory so there are mainly four points all organism is made up of cells and its cell product so inside the cell, metabolic reactions is going to take place. So all the cells will be coming from the pre-existing cells. Not it is going to come as such. And every organism start its life from a single cell only. Now we are going to see about the classification part. So actually all living organisms present on earth can be classified into two. So one is non-cellular and the next one is cellular. So, non-cellular in the sense, obviously, they do not contain cells. So, the example for this non-cellular is example viruses. So, coming to the cellular, the cellular is divided into two. One is prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So, now we are going to see what is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic so that we can understand it a little better. So, the organism which consists of prokaryotic cell is called as the prokaryotes is prokaryotes. So the organism which consists of eukaryotic cell is called as a eukaryotes. So first we'll start from the size. So here the size will be the size of the prokaryotic cell will be very small maybe about 10 mm. So in the eukaryotic cell it will be very large about 5 to 100 mm. So coming to nucleus. So here the nucleus will be absent here the nucleus will be present as it is a prokaryotic organism it consists of only single chromosomes Cons contains only single chromosome i'll explain you during the uh, diagram 
so we'll be seeing the diagram of this prokaryotic and also eukaryotic cell so coming to the eukaryotic it contain more than one chromosome then nucleolus so the nucleolus is the thing which is present inside the nucleus right so for example this is the cell is the nucleus so inside the nucleus there will also be a very thick part that is called as a nucleolus so here nucleolus will also absent because nucleus itself is not there right so here it will be present then membrane bound organelles or absent membrane bound cell organelles are absent so here it is present so what do you mean by membrane bounded so the organelles that is surrounded by a layer you know uh, the layer is phospholipid layer for example if we take a mitochondria in the eukaryotic organism it consists of phospholipid layer in the outside so that's why it is called as a membrane bound organelles but in the prokaryotic it is not there it is absent so here speaking about the cell division here the cell division takes place by the fission so we have been studying the lower classes right binary fission budding and all so the prokaryotic organism will undergo fission and also budding so coming to the eukaryotic organisms for the cell division it will go mitotic or meiotic cell division so this is all about prokaryotic and also eukaryotic organisms so in this we spoke about size and uh, nucleus chromosomes nucleolus and then membrane bound cell organelles and also cell division yes coming back to the prokaryotic cell so now let's draw the prokaryotic cell you have to be very careful so, yes it consists of three layers Okay, so this is flagellum, and also there will be structure like this. This is called. So this flagellum layers will be used for the movement of the organism. So here, this first layer is capsule, okay, which is used for the production. And then the second is cell wall, and then here the third one is plasma membrane. So as I've already told you, this prokaryotic cell does not have nucleus. It consists of a single chromosome-like structure. Called nucleon. No, it will be like this, something like this. So this is nucleon. Again, it also consists of cytoplasm and also it consists of ribosomes for the production of proteins. So these are the basic structure of the prokaryotic cell. Now let's look into the eukaryotic cell. So this layer is the plasma membrane and again here this is cytoplasm now first we'll speak about the nucleus first let me draw a little bit big so the outer part of the nucleus is called nuclear membrane inside the nucleus there will be a fluid like cytoplasm you know that is called as a nucleoplasm so inside the nucleus there will be nucleolus and also there will be chromosomes right let me mark it as a chromatin so which is a thin thread like structure so all this stuff is the nucleus so then nearby nucleus there will be the structure like this so here 
the ribosomes are there. So this is, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. So the first one is rough endoplasmic reticulum which consists of ribosomes. That's why it is called as a rough. And here it will also consist of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So after that there will be the structure like this called Golgi apparatus and that is the powerhouse of the cell it is mitochondria right and also there will be lysosomes so these are the basic structure of the eukaryotic cell so we'll be seeing all these functions in our further videos okay so stay, stay tuned thank you